dude or disgruntled taxi or bus driver, maybe a waitress more interested in doing her nails than making your order her raison d'etre. Maybe a salesperson who makes you feel like a monster cheat and liar when you want to return a faulty product. Yes, we've all been there, haven't we? (laughs) And now, more than ever, the way you and your staff interface with customers is very important for the success of your business. And to tell us why, I have customer service strategist Nancy Georges from Magnolia Solutions on the line to tell us all about it. Now, Nancy, nothing makes my blood boil more than poor or inept service, but it seems to me that a lot of Australians in the service industry think that serving someone's beneath them, and I'm just wondering if that's a reality or a perception of mine. I actually think, Prue, that it is very much a reality, and I think it's an unfortunate reality for Australia because it seems to be getting worse instead of getting better. And I, I think it, it sort of comes from our culture. Our culture is quite laid back and not very class structured, but I think that to be in customer service, you need to understand that I have to serve somebody who comes in my store in my business. So I think that experience is very, very common and you're not alone. Mm. Well, we often send up the yanks, you know, you know, have a nice mm-hmm. day service mm-hmm. ethos, which is so artificial, mm-hmm. but certainly it seems to be a lot better than ours. Very much. I think if you think about uh, serv- customer service in the USA, you've definitely got a commission-based structure there, so they have to be nice to make the money to make the sale. Think of Pretty Woman when she walks back into the store yes. and says to her, you know, you worked on commission, mistake, big mistake. <laughs> and that's, that's a, I always say to people, you should think about that because if, your bus- if the store that you work for, work for does not do well, you will not have a job. And, and we're a little bit sort of different in Australia. And I think Americans fake it till they make it, but they sort of are sincere about it. And I think that's what we need to do here. I also don't think that there are the right people hired in customer service here a lot, especially in retail. I think that people are sort of hired to get a job and not necessarily because they understand that. So yeah, mm, that's, no, that's very important. Now tell me, what, what constitutes good customer service? I think ultimately it's good manners. So if you, if you think about customer service should be you're being invited into somebody's store, into their business, so you are welcomed, you are greeted, you are asked what you want, and you are given what you want in a, in, with pride. I always say it's good customer service is giving the customers what they want, but with pride. So you as a business owner take pride in giving the customer what they want, but I think it's also being able to listen and take the time for the customer, but ultimately I do think it's customer service manners. Well, we've heard of that, you know, waiter, there's a fly in my soup Mm -hmm. scenario. Mm -hmm. What are some of the crook customer service experiences you've heard of? We've had, a, we've had a lot of sort of different experiences back where um, people will ring looking for a product and, and if a store doesn't have the product that they have, they refer them to another store which solves a problem or they'll just say, no, I don't know where you can get black shoes from when I sell blue shoes or uh, sending email. You know, everybody's online now. So when people send you an email via your website and you don't reply, we get a lot of people saying they haven't had replies back or walking into a store with a faulty product, which was a great example you gave, and instead of offering to, to swap it or replace it or fix it, you're being interrogated and, and blamed for the, the product being broken when sometimes it's still in the wrapping and packaging. And, and I think that the I think that the rudeness, whether it's it's not it's never justified to have somebody be rude to you when you're in their business. Mm. And I definitely think there's a lot of bad experiences where or people think, you know, I'll just give you a refund rather than let me help you fix your problem. Yeah. Do you think that customers are becoming less tolerant of poor cost customers? Service these days? Yes, definitely, definitely, and I think the internet is really changing the way that customers share news. They spread good and bad experiences. You mentioned Twitter earlier, and I really do recommend that you know business owners and retailers get on Twitter. And everybody should be on Twitter. It's great fun. But um, you know, just to give you an example, a few weeks ago I had a very bad. Um, experience with the largest telecommunications company in our country. No prizes for guessing. Yes. And um, and I tweeted it and I just, you know, got online and I said, you would not believe the experience I had. I cannot believe this. You know, I got, after 20 minutes on hold, I en- ended up getting a, we we're got faulty service, please call back message. Um, within, I'm not kidding you, 10 minutes, I had a reply on Twitter from that company's customer service department asking me to call them on a, a, num- a number or to email them and they'd fix my problem, which they did. And But by that time, I'd already tweeted to 1,500 of my followers who had already tweeted to their followers. So 
the damage had been done. Very much. And of course, we have sites like Whirlpool now, where you know they give a commentary of service on, it, on an ongoing basis. Their visibility, mm-hmm. restaurant guides. I mean, you know, you can never erase that as a business owner. Once that's there in print, you can never erase that. And we all know, for every one bad bad, bad service story you have, it gets told to ten people. And those 10 people tell 10 people. And that's a really, it's a bad case to be in. And I think when consumers find a place to have a voice, they actually realise, hang on, that's not okay that somebody did that to me or or I had that experience. Whereas I think in the past, definitely as Australians, we didn't complain and we just put up with it. You know, Mm -hmm. we got bad food in a restaurant, we didn't send it back or comment. We got the wrong product sent to us, we just kept it and didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. But we never bought again or we never went back to that business. And I think that's... You know, that repeat business is, is invaluable and, and that's what we miss out on as business owners who don't address customer service. So apart from obviously choosing the right staff for that service job, mm. it's a change, I guess, of attitude, mm. culture and mm. policy within a company. Is that what, to wrap it up for people who are listening? Sure, yes, very much. I, I, cause I, I do believe in 2009 and moving forward, the only thing that will differentiate one business to another is the customer service. And I think if you don't employ the right people and train the right people and, and actually have it clear in your mind what you want as a business owner to, to impart that, I think you will find very quickly that you will be losing your business. Mm. Well, a great message to everybody, Nancy. Thank you for your time tonight. You're welcome. Thanks, Prue. Nancy Georges, she's from Magnolia Solutions. Well, uh, we actually have uh, Verity on the line. Verity, you've got a tale to